I talked in a previous video about how to find the inverse graphically for a function, and in this video what I'll do is I'll talk about how to find the inverse algebraically, and then we could do, you know, whatever we wanted with that inverse function, whether it's graph it, find different values of the inverse function, and go from there. Now, I'm not going to get into domain restrictions for this one, or, you know, identifying whether or not the inverse actually is a function, uh, and, and what we could, would do with that, but uh, I'm really just going to look at the algebra behind this switching the, the x's and the y's. So, um, first off, if we have a function like so, so this would be the graph of a line, um, to find the inverse, the first thing you want to do is remember that f of x is really just a fancy way of writing y. I'm just going to rewrite this as y equals 2x minus 3. So this f of x, we're going to change it to a y. Now, to find the inverse function, remember that in the graphing video, we talked about how we switch the x and the y coordinate. And it'll actually be kind of the same idea here, where what we're going to do is switch the x and the y in the equation. So the y becomes the x and the x becomes the y. And then functions are usually written with, with the y isolated. So now we're just going to re-isolate the y after we've switched them. So step one, write it with a y. Step two, switch the x and the y. And then the last step here will be to solve for y. So let's get the y by itself. I'm going to add 3 on both sides. We'll get x plus 3 is equal to 2y. And then if I divide by 2 on both sides, I can write this a few different ways, but this would be fine for this one. I could write it as one big fraction, or I could split this up into, uh, you know, 1 half x plus 3 over 2. That's the same thing. Um, and then what I'm going to do now is just write this in inverse function notation, where this isn't read f to the negative 1 power. It's read the inverse of f is x plus 3 all divided by 2. So if we were to graph this function and this function, they would have that symmetry that we talked about the other day over the line y equals x, where, and I'm just going to make a really rough sketch here, but if one graph looked like this, then the other graph would have to look something like this. So they would have that symmetry about that um, imaginary, not imaginary, but that line y equals x that I drew in green. Okay, next one. So you may get linear functions, you may get nonlinear functions. On this one we have a square root graph, so um, we're going to start the exact same way. We're going to write this as y equals the square root of x minus 4. And then we're just going to switch the x and the y. So I'm going to make it x equals the square root of y minus 4. Now, we've got to do things in order here. So since I have a big square root covering this whole side here, to undo that or to clear that out, I'm going to have to square, do the opposite, I'm going to have to square both sides. So that would give me x squared equals, and this would be y minus 4. And then to get the y by itself again, I'm just going to add the 4 over. So I'm going to write the y over on this side. We would have x squared plus 4. And then finally, I'm just going to write this in function notation. So since this is an inverse, oops. Sorry, we're dealing with h here. So since this is an inverse function, the inverse of h of x is equal to x squared plus 4. Now, again, I'm not going to get into the real specifics here. Some of you guys who you know might be in um, different math classes may know there's, there's other stipulations here to this. But for now, that's really all that we, uh, we're going to talk about. Um, last one. We're going to take this function again. I encourage you to try, um, you know, try this on your own. See if you can get the pattern here. Um, but we're going to go right through it. So we'll make this y equals x squared minus 4. And then, again, we're going to switch the x and the y. So we'll make this x equals y squared minus 4. And then what I'm going to do is add 4 to both sides. So this would be x plus 4 equals y squared. And then we're going to square root both sides. Now, again, I'm not going to go crazy here, but just a friendly reminder, when you square root both sides, we're going to put a plus or minus sign here. I'm not going to get into domain and range issues or whether this is a function or not, which it's not if you're uh, wondering on this one. Um, so plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. So to get rid of the squared, we have to square root. And then uh, we're just going to write this in inverse function notation with the f 
f inverse of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. So I haven't told you all the little nitty gritty things that you may learn in another math class um, with restricting the domain and all different things like that. Um, but this is a good basic little intro to how to find the inverse algebraically for a function.